Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today's webinar. We'll give it just a minute to let everyone join and we'll get started. Hello to everyone that's just joined. We're just going to give it um, a few more seconds to let more people join and then we'll jump straight in. So as it is a minute past 12, I think we'll get started and just let people continue to join. But yeah, thank you very much for joining us to our third and final webinar for our Green Match Fund series. Um, and my name is Beth, I'm the Marketing Comms Manager here at Big Give. And this session is completely open for you all just to kind of ask your questions. Um, no question's a silly question. Um, and we're happy just to answer and help you out as much as we can. And on the call, I have my lovely colleague, Karen, who I'll let introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen. I'm the Customer and Operations Executive at The Big Give. I see a lot of familiar names from emails, but it's nice to see you over Zoom as well. <laughs> So before we get started, I'm just gonna run through the admin -y bit of the webinar. So you will see the chat box and you can set your chat reply to everyone. Please introduce yourselves and you can chat to share ideas and thoughts. And if you have any tech issues, please post them here too. There's also the Q and A box and you can type your questions into this box as well and we'll address them. You can also raise your hand to speak at the bottom of the Zoom panel. You can ask your questions directly like that as well. And if there's any accessibility thing, things, please click on the caption button to see a live transcript. And just to note that the meeting is being recorded. And if you have any additional questions after this webinar, you can always email us at hello at biggive.org and we'll be happy to help you. Wonderful, thank you. So before we kind of jump straight into the questions, I thought I'd just run over a few key points um, so everyone's just aware. Um, the campaign runs from Thursday the 20th of April to Thursday the 27th of April, so not long left to go now. Um, and all of those donations that you raise during that campaign need to be made via your Big Give Green Match Fund page in order to be matched. All of those donations need to be made by debit, credit card, Google Pay, Apple Pay, or if a donation is over £500, we do have a new back donation facility that your, um, all of your supporters will be able to use. Donations will be matched up to your specific match fund pot amount. And if you hit the, your fundraising target, which is great, you can still receive unmatched donations until the campaign ends. Please do tag Big Give in your social post if you can. We will get to as many as possible to reshare and we retweet and making sure your campaigns are getting as much exposure as possible. And if at any point you need some resources or assets, these can all be found in the support section of the charity portal under Green Match Fund. And we'll be, we'll be updating um, some of the assets very soon with toolkits that all of you can use in your promotional resources. And of course, as Karen already mentioned, please do get in touch with us. Don't be afraid to send us an email and we're happy to help out. So I'm going to stop sharing and kind of let everyone jump straight into questions. Um, and as I said, um, please do pop your questions in the Q&A box, in the chat, or raise your hand if you want to talk in person and we're just here to answer them. I can see Lewis has raised his hand, so let me open this. Hi, Lewis. Can you guys hear me? Yes. First of all, thank you so much, Beth and Karen, for organizing this. It's been so educational and so uh, good for us to learn about <clears throat> how big it works. 
So without further ado, I work for Pelorus Foundation. We are an international wildlife conservation charity. And I remember from yesterday's uh, call that one of the things you guys recommended was to localize or uh, appeal. But my question would be, at the moment, I'm trying to make an appeal to support pangolins. So I'm supporting pangolins in the southern part of the African continent, specifically in Namibia. I work from London. How on earth do I localize my efforts for my campaign, knowing that it's in Namibia? What are your thoughts around this? Thank you. Thanks, Lewis. Really um, great question and something um, that is a really relevant point. As um, Ed kind of mentioned in the call yesterday, I know that for international charities who are working with projects abroad, we know that it's a bit harder to localize and that might not necessarily work for you. Um, what you could suggest is trying to get in touch with, you know, um, new sites where your charity is actually based. So if you're based in London, that's where your he kind of headquarters, I would say, are. There is still an option to kind of reach out to maybe local London news to cover the event. Um, but I would definitely say that there's, you know, a, a potential story there, particularly if you've got case studies um, that focus on what your charity is doing on the ground over there. I think that's still really relevant. And if you've got like statistics and everything that you could use to kind of pull into that, um, a really good chance to do that there. But I will, um, I will send that question to Ed actually and see if he's got um, any more advice and then hopefully we can get back to you. So if you could put your email um, in the chat and Karen can record that um, and then we can, we can see what Ed says as well. Okay, I'm going to drop my email. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, Karen. I think we've got a few more questions, Karen. So if you could. Um... Yeah. Um, the one in the QA box is can corporates and trusts and foundations also give to the campaign? So the answer is yes. And when they're donating, they would fill out their individual's name and then use a company or the trust's um, bank details in that section. And so we'll know it's from a trust or a foundation. And also just to say, I know that a lot of trusts and foundations um, may not necessarily have a bank um, or, or card that they can use to make um, a credit or debit card transaction. So um, I've seen a, quite a few questions regarding the BACS facility. So I've, maybe it's worth just going through that. But essentially we've introduced a new feature which will allow um, anyone who can't donate via um, debit or credit card to now donate via bank transfer. These, uh, the minimum donation amount for that is 500 pounds. So particularly if you do have a trust or foundation that doesn't have a card, this could be a good facility for them. We will be sending out details about the BACS um, payment option either later today or tomorrow. So you'll have all of the information on how you can actually do that. But essentially what happens is a trustful foundation creates a essential donor account on the big give, which they can make the bank transfer to. And then during that campaign page, um, when the campaign is live, they can just donate to your charity directly from your campaign page. And then that bank transfer donation can be matched and you will then receive that payment along with all of your other donation payments at the end of the campaign. Um, so yeah, no, that's a lot of information, but we will be sending out another email so you have all of that and all of the steps there that you can send to those potential donors. Uh, Beth, another question that came in is if you know what percentage of groups are successful in raising at least 25% of their match or 50%. Really good question. Um, I don't know if we have that statistic for Green Match Fund. From our last Christmas challenge, I believe 70% of organizations reach their target um, or over their target. Really good question for Green Match Fund. It's something that we'll have to take away. Um, but yeah, it's something we'll, we'll have a look into. Great. Uh, another question that came in the QA as well is we're hoping to work with a corporate partner to raise donations from their employees. When can we share the campaign page with them so they can prepare their internal comms for their employees? So you should be able to see your campaign page. 
Um, you can log into the portal, go to your campaign dashboard, and there's a button on the side of the page which says view campaign page. And you can also go to our main Green Match Fund website page and type in your charity name. I can link that in the chat now. So I can direct you in the right place. Um, yeah. And also just to note, um, whilst you do have access to your campaign page now, that donate button on the page will not be there until the campaign goes live on the 20th. So you can share that page from now, but the donate button will not appear until the campaign starts. A question in the chat is, last year we were contacted by a big give PR agency, Connor PR, at the start of the campaign for a press release. Will you be using a PR company again this year and should we prepare a press release? Thanks. Yeah, really good question. So Big Give are fortunate to be working with J&H Communications who are providing us with year round PR support. So they are currently working with us um, for PR for this campaign. Um, as far as I know, we haven't contacted the charities this year for press releases. But I would say if you do have a really good case study or statistic or something that you think is really relevant to be including in press, do get in touch with us. We have, um, you can contact us at hello at Big Give or we do have a press at um, biggive.org email, which you can direct all of your press queries to and Big Give team and J&H will be picking those emails up as well. Um, I can see one question here that says, can you clarify, please, the match for match account? I'm not 100% sure um, what, that, what that means. So if you could clarify a bit further, that would be amazing. Um, in the meantime, is there any other questions on the dot, Karen? Um, I don't see any at the minute, so... Oh, will there be a Green Match Fund video again with celebrities, et cetera? This was really great last year. Yes, so it's something we are currently in the process of working on. We're very fortunate to be having uh, Megan McCubbin supporting the Green Match Fund campaign this year. So she will be included in the video and we're aiming to launch that video a week before the campaign. So we'll make sure that all of you have a link to that video. Um, so Karen, question here, can I make edits to my campaign page wording? Yes, you can. Um, you can make minor edits to the campaign page. So as long as it's not affecting the project, essentially, that's fine. You can send the edits to hello at biggive.org and we'll update this for you, but please submit any edits by Wednesday, 12th of, 12th of April. So next week. Great, right. and I can see Sarah's raising her hand, so I'll allow that. Uh, can you unmute Sarah? Is that working? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry, it's odd not having any control from our <laughs> Um Hi, I'm Sarah Barrett. I work for the Organic Research Centre. Um, this is probably our third, yeah, it'll be our third big give and second green match fund. Um, I was sorry, I was just trying to raise my hand in relation to the press release thing earlier. Um, are there any, so you did like a kind of dummy, uh, well, I, I think you're going to update your assets soon because there's a lot of gaps and I'm just, I'm assuming that's going to happen based on what you said. So you might be doing this anyway, but there was like a kind of dummy letter that you might write to a supporter, but it still refers to things like uh, World Earth Day, which obviously isn't relevant this year. I guess my point is, some of the asset stuff is is out of date it's based on last year's stuff so I'm sure when you do an update all of that will probably be sorted anyway but the other thing was there was sort of like a a guide on wording you might use and when we tend to do a press release press release we'll obviously say something about the big give in there I didn't know if you had like a boilerplate type wording you'd like us to use um yeah that's my question on the press release basically from our right. end <laughs> yeah no worries um so just in regards to the supporter letter template we'll definitely check that um after this 
Um, I would just say that World Earth Day is happening on the 22nd, so it's still relevant to pull into any comms. It just okay. won't be on that launch day. Yeah. Um, regarding the press template, that is something that I have updated very recently. So in the marketing templates resource, there is now a link to that press um, boilerplate that you can use. But yeah, let me know if you have any issues um, accessing that and we can we can help out. OK, thank you. Uh, let's see, we've got another person here. Hiya, can you unmute? Hi, um, thank you so much for taking my question. I actually have two. Um, so to be clear, um, if we rent raise 10K, the green match fund would also match another 10K, is that correct? Yeah, so it, it depends what your campaign target is. But if you have 10K of match funds allocated to your campaign and you raise 10K in online donations, then yeah, you would um, your total fundraising target would be 20K and that's what you would receive. And um, if we raise over our target amount, will the green match still match it? Or is it just up to 10K? So it'll be just up to your allocated match funding amount. So anything you raise over that target just counts as extra unmatched and unrestricted donations to your campaign. And uh, last question, sorry. Um, once, uh, once the campaign uh, week starts, will it be clear on the campaign page like how to donate, like i.e. like a donation button? Yeah, exactly. So the, that donate button will appear on your page um, at 12 p.m. midday on Thursday. And then there's like key steps for all of your supporters. So it's very clear on how to donate. If you are interested in how it looks, I would advise going to our website now and just having a look at one of our active campaigns. You can click donate on one of them and just like go through the first steps and just get, kind of get an idea of what your campaign page will look like. OK, perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. I see a question here. We will likely be approaching corporates for match funding. In terms of thanking post campaign, what do you think about giving the use of small trophies as thank yous? I mean, yeah, I haven't really had experience with that before. I think it sounds like a great thing. You know, I would love that. <laughs> but um, I think it's definitely worth asking other charities because they will know a lot more about post campaign thank yous we actually have a facebook group um where you can kind of post questions to other charities so potentially something that you might want to do i'll put it in the chat now um so all of you have kind of a chance to talk to each other and get advice from each other um after the campaign but yeah definitely something that's not in my um um experience so Another question is, I'm waiting on trustee date of births to finish the portal details. What's the latest I can submit this? So there isn't an official deadline to be submitting this, but of course, the earlier, the better, because that means your payment details will be confirmed. And in that sense, you'll be able to view your campaign page and obviously get the donations to yourself after when the campaign's live and also after. So essentially as soon as possible. And also the campaign runs for a week, but what is the final date and time that donations will be matched? And can people still give to the site for a period of time after or will it close? So the campaign will be live from April 20th to the 27th, both at midday. Um, in terms of the donations being matched, it's until you reach your target, of course, in that time period. And yeah, did I miss anything, Beth? Um, so yeah, just to kind of add to that, the donate button will disappear from your campaign page after 12 p.m. on the 27th. So if you are um, potentially going to receive more donations, what I would do after that point is start directing people to your main um your main um, website and getting them to donate via whatever regular donate you, um, option you have set up on your website already. But, oh yeah, just to add, those won't be matched by the way. Um, okay, let's have a look. In terms of income reconciliation for our internal systems, can you clarify how we'll know what is the big give income please? 
Um, so when you receive a payment from us, it should be, it should say Big Give and then your charity name. Um, so it should be clear in your bank statement that the payment's from Big Give. Um, Stripe pays out pay their payments every Monday with a 14 day delay. So that means you may, I think you will see two separate payments from Big Give that will make up your online donation payment. So just keep that in mind when you receive the first one, you should wait to expect the second one as well. I see two questions regarding donor data. So yes, you can see this if you go to your campaign in your portal. I think it's under, is it donations? Yeah. Where you see the donation details in the CSV and you'll be able to get everything you need, especially for gift aid as well. Great. Um, I have a question here. When we release the hashtag you'd like us to use as part of the campaign, please. So the hashtag is hashtag green match fund. Um, we put this in a webinar, but I will make sure it's updated in the resources as well um, if it's not there already. So I'll just make a note of that. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, there's a question in the Q&A, which is last year's marketing toolkit had a reference to us being able to create trackable links so we can see where donations come from and track how many conversions we are getting from various marketing effort. Is it possible to set up trackable links again this year? Um, so yeah, I think you may be referring to like Bitly or something. Um, so if you have like a, you create like a short link for your campaign, you can set um, certain URM parameters so you can track um, like who's used that link um, in a specific um, materials that you use. So you might have a different short link for email. You might have a different short link for any of the social posts you put out. So then in like Bitly, you can see kind of who's picked on that link and where they've come from. Um, in terms of like tracking for um, like ads or anything, we can't allow pixels onto um, our website. So if you're doing any type of paid ads, um, and you want to track conversions, one way to do that is to set up like a landing page on your website, um, which you would then put the pixel on and you can track people who have gone to that website and then click to your big give donate page. Obviously, the downside of that is that you are adding one extra step. So you should consider, you know, what what you want to do in terms of if the tracking is most important or if it's just getting people to your donate page. So, yeah, something to think about. A uh, question here is for gift aid. Are we the ones who have to apply for gift aid? Thanks so much. So in your charity portal under account, you'll be able to see a tab that says claim gift aid, which would allow us to claim gift aid on your behalf when you fill out the form. Um, just to note that we can't claim gift aid on any campaigns that you've previously attended if you haven't submitted the form yet. So it's from when you submitted the form that we'll be able to claim gift aid. And just to add to that, um, you don't need to authorize Big Give to claim gift aid. If you prefer to claim in-house, you can do that. And as mentioned before, you will have access to the donor data in that donations report with all the info you need to claim gift aid in-house if you don't want to authorize Big Give to do that for you. Um, have a look at yeah, the questions. Uh, yeah, but there's a question in the QA, which is, can we send people a link directly to the donation form? Or should we send them to the campaign page and tell them to click donate? Yeah, so that donate um, link won't be available yet because the donate button only appears when the campaign goes live. So when you're directing people now, you can direct, um, direct them straight to that campaign page and tell them to click donate when the campaign's live. Um, if you then um, want to send further comments whilst the campaign's happening, you can get access to that donate form. We can, you can direct them straight to do from that point, um, but it won't be until the campaign starts. A question that came in about gift aid. To sign this off, it is saying it has to be done by the person responsible in the trust. 
If they aren't currently at work, am I allowed to do this on their behalf with their approval? Yeah, so um, to be able to have that person's name show in the form, they need to be added to the team section of your charity portal, and then they would need to log in and complete that section. So essentially what you would need to do if you have their permission is to create that login for them, get, get them to help you get access to that, and then log into the, to the portal as them and then complete the form on their behalf. But yeah, I would just make sure you, you know, if you have approval that you have something kind of written down to show that you have approval to do that. A question that came in the Q&A is, is it possible to make it very clear to donors that they should only take gift aid if eligible? We had problems with businesses clicking the box last year when they weren't. Um, so unfortunately, we can't add any more kind of text to that field um, just because we want to make it. I think there's already quite a lot of text there on that donation form, and it kind of adds a lot of friction if we continue to just add more wording. Um, what I would advise is trying to make it very clear in any comms that you've got going out. Um, and also, if you keep an eye on that donation, the donation data in your um, portal that comes in, if you're seeing ones that have done it incorrectly, um, if you let us know as soon as possible, and we can work out how to correct that um, whilst the campaign's running, because um, it gets a bit more complicated after the campaign goes live. I mean, after the campaign ends. You mentioned that you would be sending details regarding box payment steps later today. Will this be via our portal or by email? Um, Beth, correct me if I'm wrong. This will be going out via email, but it will be available in the support section as well later on. Yeah, that's correct. Um, uh, one question here. I'm having an in-person fundraising event during the campaign. What's the best way to accept donations? Um, so really great if you're having um, a fundraising event. Um, one way I've known charities do it before is they have um, phones and laptops and stuff available at the event. Um, so people can make their donation directly whilst the fundraising event is happening. Um, I know a lot of charities are starting to use QR codes now so that when they have a QR code, it links directly to a campaign page. So people can make donations on their phone or whatever um, device they have there with them at the time. Um, if you are accepting cash, it is a little bit more complicated. What you can do is get someone from your charity to accept those cash donations and then make a donation on the behalf of all of those donors. Um, but to note, we can't accept donations from the charity like bank account itself, it would have to be like a trustee or an employee making donations from their personal card and accepting those cash donations. So yeah, something you would have to work out with your finance team, but kind of an alternative option if you do need to collect cash at the event. Great, thanks Beth. Another question is what happens if we don't reach our campaign target? Um, so you'll receive everything you raise um, plus whatever that amount was matched up to your allocated match funding amount. Um, of course, there isn't kind of a, um, what's the word I'm thinking of, like a consequence for not reaching your target. Um, you will still receive what you raised plus that amount matched, but you just won't access the remaining match funding in your pot. Right, I think that's all the questions we have so far, but I'll let a few things, give it a few minutes to see if anything else comes in. Oh yeah, um, one came in, it says, I missed the marketing webinars, unfortunately, but wondered if you covered how we should use the assets more specifically. And then I think there's the assets, but we can't access those in the chat right um so yeah in the marketing um webinars we had a beginners and an advanced one the links to that are in um 
the support section of the portal, I, I believe on templates and assets or one of those marketing ones. Um, so you can view those recordings if you need to look back at them. But we went over um, kind of the creative direction for the campaign and then a bit more into detail about how we're using that creative direction in our social media and emails and how you can use like press and paid ads and so on. So I definitely advise having a look at those if you haven't already. Um, but we didn't go into detail exactly about the assets. We will make a toolkit available for charities and that is, should be finished today and hopefully be going out tomorrow. So in that toolkit, it'll give a bit more detail about the creative direction and um, how you can start using those assets in your own resources. It gives you lots of details about brand guidelines, everything. So that will be available. Um, but we don't have any, if you do want our guidelines now, um, in the support section under the general section, you'll find our brand guidelines. So that gives you a bit more details about our logos and how you can use our logos. But all of the social media graphics and everything that we have there are for you to use and kind of develop for your own purposes. Um, is kind of completely free how you use them, um, as long as you're not kind of editing um, the logos or making it different and stuff like that. And they added to that and said, um, I gave a list of what's on the assets, but it doesn't say what they are for exactly, just says for social, et cetera, but not details about it's, if it's for Facebook or Twitter. Sure. So um, just from the list of assets you sent, the logos and um, the three logos are for anything that could be socials, emails, whatever you're using graphics for, and you need the GMF logo. So it's kind of up to you how you use them, but they're just kind of access to our logo. So you have them. The email header is for any emails that you're due to be sending out. The size of that header should work, but you can, can resize it to your purposes if you need to. Um, and the social graphics are just for, meant for social media and they can be used just as like a save the date. Um, but we put them there in the interim, just so you have assets before the toolkit is sent out. But again, um, you can use them on any, any, um, any social media site. Um, I can see Trudy said that she can't see the charity with all the other charities. Um, the main reason for that would be if something potentially has been uploaded with bank details. Um, Karen, maybe if you can make a note of the charity, yeah. uh, just to double check. Um, but what you... I would do is... Sorry, you... go ahead. Yeah, Trudy, if you can send us an email, um, just so we have that on record and we can look into that for you and, and make sure um, we know why that's not showing. Um, could you possibly type in the project name as well to see if I can find it and link it here? A question in the Q&A. The assets are great, but they do come out quite late, so difficult to try and get everything organized in time. If there's any way to make these available sooner next time, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, really good point, Sarah. I completely understand. Um, this year, we've been working with a creative agency called Shape History, who's been supporting us with the GMF assets, everything. So that's why just some things have been slightly more delayed as things just need sign off and everything. But completely take that point and would we'll definitely look to make sure that we're um, adding assets as soon as possible um, for charities to use. Great. I think we might end up getting some time back because um, we're halfway through and it looks like we don't have any questions that have come in. Um, we'll just give it a minute and then if no further questions come in, we'll close. Thanks for joining. Thanks everyone. And yeah, if you do think of any other questions in the meantime, please do feel free to send us an email. Um, but otherwise, thank you all for joining us and hope you have a lovely lunch break. <laughs>